Good afternoon. In the previous lecture, we talked about communication, the different types of communication, the process of communication, and we talked in brief about the barriers to the process of communication. So today we are going to talk about barriers to the process of communication. What is it that hinders the process of communication? Now, as we have been talking of the barriers, we have also talked about the process of communication. Let us have a quick recap about the process of communication. The process of communication occurs when the sender encodes a message. That is, sender frames a message and the sender then sends the message to the other person by choosing a channel or a medium. Now, when the receiver receives the message at the other end, other end and then decodes that message and gives a feedback of that message, the process of communication is complete. As you can all see in the figure, the process of communication is completed through this. That is, the sender is encoding the message, the, then it is sending it through a proper channel and the receiver is further translating that message or decoding that message, understanding that message and then responding or reciprocating to that message. The whole process is said to be the process of communication. Now, in such circumstances, it may often occur that what the sender had intended to communicate to the receiver, it is not communicated in that manner. Now, at that time, it becomes a problem that the sender feels that I had sent this message and the reply to this message is not what I expected to be. Now, there are times that when we try to communicate the, the man, in the manner that we want, but it is not received in the manner that we had expected. So, when did it go wrong? What happened that all of a sudden or what happened that we do not get the expected response to our communication. Now, that thing or the hindrance or that thing that obstructs us from communicating clearly or what occurs in between or what hinders us is said to be the barrier to the process of communication. We all know that Yes, as we all know that communication is, is derived from the Latin word communus which means to make common. So when we are trying to communicate to other people, we are actually trying to come to a common point wherein whatever we are trying to make it clear to the other person, the other person is able to understand it in the sense that we have communicated to the other person. Now, when such a thing does not happen, when we do not get the desired result or when we do not get the result that we have expected, something has gone wrong somewhere. We need to understand what is it that has gone wrong. Now, in this process, we come to know that there is something called barrier or hindrance or an obstacle. So today we are going to discuss about what are the barriers to the process of communication. Let us quickly go through that. Basically, we have the barriers as the barrier of noise. Then we have the physical barrier. We have the psychological barriers. We have the mechanical uh, barriers and the linguistic and cultural barriers. I repeat, first we have the noise as the barrier. Second, we have the physical barriers to the process of communication. Then we have the psychological barriers to the process of communication. Then we have the cultural and linguistic barriers. And fifth, the mechanical barriers to the process of communication. We are going to talk about it in detail one by one. Let us first talk about noise. What is noise? Any kind of disturbance that is happening in and around us is said to be noise. Whatever noise that you come, you can hear the noise of the, of, the, of the bus that is passing. You can hear the noise of the traffic. You can hear the noise of people speaking around you. Now anything that is hindering the process of communication is 
noise. So when you hear a noise or when, when you hear something that is that the noise is very very loud, it hinders the process of communication. Let us see how it hinders the process of communication. The first of its kind is physical noise. The noise that is occurring in our physical environment and is obstructing us from communicating to the other persons is said to be physical noise. For example, when you are talking to somebody and especially at the bus stop, you can see there is a lot of traffic, there is a lot of noise going on. So, their process of communication or whatever you are trying to communicate to the other person may or may not be that clear because of the physical noise, because of the noise that is produced due to the blow horns of the traffic that is moving by, due to the buses and due to several other surrounding that is there and that obstructs as a hindrance to the process of communication and in that case your communication to the other person or whatever you are saying to the other person will not be clear. Next we come to the technical noise. The noise that is produced due to the technical things like uh, example you can take up mobile or a phone. Now for example if you are talking to somebody over a phone and you step in the lift. Now in that case in the lift as you know that there are no signals. So your communication to that person would stop and it has stopped due to a technical barrier because in the lift there are there is no signal your mobile is not receiving any signal due to which whatever the other person is trying to communicate to you is not happening is not clear so you are not able to understand what the other person is saying neither is the other person able to understand what you want to communicate to, them, to that person so in this in this case technical noise is the is the barrier that is obstructing you to communicate to the other person you can also take up like when you are moving on escalator or when you are when you climb up the elevator and you are speaking on the phone so there is a disturbance in that because it's uh, when you are climbing the signals that uh, most of the times you don't get the proper signal strength due to which you are not able to communicate to the other person so in that case it is technical noise which is acting as a barrier to the process of communication and due to which your communication may result into failure. So you need to take care that when you are talking to some important persons, when you are talking to somebody who will really, who really makes a difference in your life, you need to take care that you take a place that is less crowded, you take a place wherein you get the good mobile strength or you get the good uh, signal strength so that whatever you are trying to communicate to the other person is clear and you do not face these kind of barriers. The next kind of barrier is the psychological noise. Now the psychological noise is something that is difficult to overcome. Because we as human beings are very very complex people and there is something or the other going on at the back of our mind. Even when I am speaking to you, I may be thinking of n number of things that are going on at the back of my mind. Now my mind is occupied into that thing. So there is a psychological noise there. I may be thinking about something else while I am speaking to you. Similarly, it may happen with you also. Like when attending a class, you may be thinking of several other things. You may be missing your home, you may be thinking about your father, about your mother, about some, about your roommate, about anything. Now when all these thoughts, they keep on disturbing you, they keep on disturbing your mind, you are not able to focus or you are not able to concentrate on what is being said to you. And in that case, your communication will be not clear. So you need to take care that you should be able to focus on one thing at a time. Whatever you are doing, you should focus at that thing only. 
and try to have a control over your mind. I know it is difficult, but we need to take care of certain things because if we want to make our communication clear, we need to fight these distractions and then reach out to people to appear as confident human beings. So these are certain things that we should keep in mind. So we discussed about the physical noise, we discussed about the technical noise and we also discussed about the psychological noise. These all are the barriers that obstructs the process of communication. Now when we were discussing about other things children, I told you that you need to take care of the timing. Sometimes it is the timing that occurs or that acts as a barrier to the process of communication. For example, there is something called as poor timings. You do not know when to talk about the right thing. So wait for your turn. The best answer could be. I have taken a very nice example children over here. Supposingly, the boss has declared that uh, the company has company is bankrupt. And you reach to your boss and say that I need an increment, I need a promotion. Certainly you have chosen a wrong timing. Now that is not the right time to talk about your promotion. The company is already in loss. The company is facing losses, it's bankrupt. And at that point of time, if you ask for a promotion or an increment, you are likely to face a bashing from your boss. So you need to choose correct timing when you are communicating to people. Take care of the timing and timing definitely plays a major role apart from all the other factors that we are going to discuss. Let us now move to the psychological barriers to the process of communication. Psychological barriers. Psychological barriers are something that are there in everybody. But only thing is we are not able to understand it. As I have already said that human mind is a very very complex and a complex thing. And psychology, psychology is the science that studies human behavior. Though it is very difficult to study human behavior because it keeps on changing. It is something that is very very complex. But still we are trying to understand the psychology of people and based on that there are some psychological barriers that occur and these barriers need to be checked so that you can make your process of communication a better one or you can straighten the road to the process of communication. So let us talk about the psychological barriers. When we talk about the psychological barriers, we have unjust assumptions. What are unjust assumptions? Some assumptions that we wrongly make. We are going to talk about it in detail a little while later. Then we have the barrier of allness, we have snap reaction, we have apathetic listener, defensive role and fear. Let us now talk about each barrier in detail. Unjust assumptions. Unjust assumptions mean children when you have made a very wrong assumption or an assumption that is not justified. For something, for somebody, it could be an uh, assumption about somebody, it could be an assumption about a thing, it could be an assumption about certain things that are happening. Now these assumptions are such that make the process of communication a difficult one and you are not able to communicate it to the people. For example, a manager, when he or she is addressing the people, assumes that the people will understand these technical jargons and he starts communicating and using those jargons. Now the people over there may or may not be able to understand those technical jargons. So before assuming it that they should have known or they know it, the manager should first of all ask them that do you know these terms or this is the meaning of these terms, I am going to use these terms in my lecture or I am going to use these terms, terms in my talk, will you be able to follow? Now when you ask people, 
the assumptions get clear you also know, come to know that what opinion you have formed for people they may or may not be correct so unnecessarily when you are forming assumptions about somebody that this person is like that often you will find that we assume things and we then make an opinion about a person we become biased towards certain persons because of our own assumptions we make assumption by looking at the person that this person must be very late or this person is not that confident this person is not that good without clarifying the things we make that assumption and that assumption works at the back of our mind and so when the communication takes place with that person or when we are talking to that person our that assumption is going on at the back of our mind and that is hindering the process of communication and that is why the, you will see that you are not able to gel well with that person or with somebody because of the kind of assumption the person he or she must have made for you so you need to take care children when you are talking or dealing with people please do not make any kind of prejudices or do not take into note any kind of such unjust assumptions because in the long run it does hurt people and the hurt of people is certainly something that will not be very good so take care that you do not frame such unjust assumptions about somebody be justified in assuming even when you are assuming something be justified be logical have a logic behind it if you have made a assumption about somebody there should be some kind of logic behind that that could defend you or that that could give you a reason that this is the reason i have framed a assumption for this or that person always give persons or people the second chance or the better chance everybody is good there is some talent there is something good in everybody so try and explore that goodness of the person and use it in the long run this will help you become as good communicators better communicators and confident communicators next is children know it all attitude some people have this attitude or some people have this feeling that we know everything there is nothing that we don't know whether it is talking to somebody whether it is making the balance sheets whether it is making whether it is uh, giving a lecture or whether it is just talking about anything we know everything so this kind of allness or this kind of attitude that you talk about that we are having most of us there are some people who have this kind of attitude and feel that we know everything and there is nothing that you can teach them they are often closed they are not open because of the barrier that is at the back of their mind and because they feel that we know everything there is nothing that we don't know so when you will often find such people and you will find that you are not fair whatever you are trying to communicate to those people they are not ready to accept because they are defensive they are not ready to open themselves and it is a kind of prejudice that they are having in themselves or this is a kind of complex that they are having that they know everything now this kind of barrier is said to be know it all attitude and such people then make generalized comments children i have taken some examples now they will often find people in and around you could be it could be politicians even or it could be some media person or it could be anybody for that matter they keep on addressing they keep on giving statements like globalization is dangerous to india whether they know about the effects of globalization or not how it is helping india or not they will give a generalized statement globalization is dangerous to in dangerous to india women cannot become superior to men in this world where men and women both go hand in hand no hand in hand nobody is superior nobody is inferior but still you will find some people commenting with the or coming out with the words like these insincerity 
is the base of business. Now, this is something, there is something that sounds very absurd. But people who are full with this kind of attitude, they will tend to make such kind of remarks or such kind of gestures or such kind of statements which shows their attitude. So before you make any kind of attitude, any kind of statement, think about it twice and then say about it. This kind of barrier is something that is very very difficult to deal with. So please be open to suggestions. If somebody is telling you something, even if you know about that thing, listen to that person patiently. Maybe he has got a better idea. Maybe he can give you some more input to the knowledge that you have already gathered. Give the due importance to the other person if you want to emerge as good communicators. It is very, very important for us children to empathize with people. I told you earlier also in the class that sympathizing is showing your concern. But empathizing is when you are putting yourself in the other person's shoe and then thinking about the problem or thinking about it from his or her perspective. Now when you do that, you are certainly giving importance to the person or to the person whom you are talking with. Now this will help you in the long run emerge as good leaders, better communicators. Let us now move towards the other points. Snap reactions. We have a very, very bad habit of interrupting the speaker before he or she has finished it. We tend to criticize the speaker because criticism is something that is very, very easy. It is very easy to criticize children. But again, empathize, as I said, as I said earlier, putting yourself into that condition and then thinking over it and then thinking that what he or she has done or what he or she is doing is something that is of real importance. So when you see that snap reactions are something when the person is being stopped by the other party before he or she has completed the message. Now this often leads to, you can say, the, some kind of errors or this often leads to some kind of mishaps. Snap reaction definitely it affects in the long run. So for example, if you are coming on the stage and you are speaking something and your partner stands up and interrupts you in between, now you will definitely be irritated because you have not finished yet, yet. But it is the reaction that he has given. He has given you a snap reaction. The motive behind that is to criticize you, to make you nervous so that whatever strength you have gathered to come over here and deliver your presentation would be stopped by that. You will lose that tempo and you would lose that favor of it and you would not be able to communicate properly. So snap reaction should be checked. Always give time and space to the communicator before he or she has finished it completely. Please do not interrupt in between. Once the communicator has communicated, whatever he or she intends to say to you, if you have any problems, if you have any doubts, if you want to clarify something, please ask the communicator only when the communication is complete. Before that, if you question it, it would be taken as snap reaction and certainly you would not like to take the blame of being a criticizer. However, genuine your question may be, it would not be taken seriously and you may feel bad, you may feel hurt because this will come under the category of snap reaction. The next is children, a pathetic listener. A pathetic listener is somebody who is psychologically dead to the communication process. That is, he is not reciprocating to what the person is speaking. He or she tends to be in his or her own world when the person is speaking. And so he is not receiving the information and hence there is no feedback. It is something children that is very very difficult to trace as well as receiver's apathy is something that is not accepted in 
the right manner. It is something that is intolerable. It's very difficult to tolerate the receiver's empathy. Just imagine you have prepared something. For example, if you come to a class, you have prepared your presentation, you have worked on it day and night, and when the final day comes, you come to the stage, you have mustered great courage, and then you come to the stage, you are trying to do your best, you are trying to put in your best. But when you find that the people, they are not interested in listening to you, or when you find few students who are absolutely indifferent to whatever you are speaking, you would certainly feel bad. And you will then lose that strength that you have gathered. So children, be attentive to whatever is being communicated. We take a note that you give due importance to what you say and what you receive from others. Defensiveness, as you can see over there. Defensiveness is something when you become defensive about a thing. At times, children, we are often defensive about the mistakes that we have committed. Because we feel that if we accept the mistake, it would result in a loss of faith. And how are we going to face the world? So, at times, we become defensive. Even if you have committed some kind of mistake, you do not accept it. Now, when you don't accept it, it acts as a barrier to the process of communication. Because certainly the other person will be irritated due to that. The other person may or may not take you in the right sense when you are being defensive about something that you have done wrong. So try and be honest in whatever you have done. If you have committed a mistake, instead of being defensive, say that yes, it's a mistake at my end. All of us commit mistakes. We are all human beings. And committing mistake is a signal or sign that we are working. Remember, nobody kicks a dead dog. So when you are committing mistakes, that means you are doing something. You are really alive and that is why you are active. And if you are active, you will commit mistakes. But the bigger challenge is to go forward and accept your mistake. If you have really done some mistake, instead of defend, being defensive about it, please go ahead and accept your mistake. Another psychological barrier is children, fear. Often it is the fear that kills the person than the real situation. All of us are gripped with fear. Sometimes it is the fear of coming on the stage. Sometimes it is the fear of facing the interview. Sometimes it is the fear of losing a face. So when we are gripped with these kind of fears, we are not able to communicate to the other person in the right manner or in the manner that we expect. So it is always better to fight your inhibitions. If you remember in the previous lectures, we talked about inhibitions and then I said that you need to fight your own inhibitions, your fears that obstructs you from being a good communicator. So when you are able to fight with that fear, you will automatically get an answer to all your problems. Let us now move back. We talked about physical barriers. Now let us talk about these physical barriers in a little detailed manner. Competing stimulus. The competing stimulus is one wherein there is a communication that is going on side by side and a person is trying to speak. So now when the communication is already going on and if you are trying to intervene into that, if you are trying to speak in that, certainly you will not be heard properly. So competing stimulus must be taken care of. As I said earlier, let the other person finish, then only speak. Wait for your turn. The next is the environmental and physical discomfort. The environment sometimes also acts as a barrier to the process of communication. For example, if you are made to sit in a very, very humid room, a room 
that is not that doesn't have proper ventilation and the number of people sitting over there is also large is also big so you will feel suffocated you will not be however good the communicator may be however good the thoughts of the communicator may be or however good he or she may be you will not be able to focus on the person because the environment is acting as a barrier to the process of communication because of high humid atmosphere over there because of lack of proper ventilation over there you are feeling suffocated and hence you will not be able to focus on what the communicator is trying to say similarly if there is some kind of physical discomfort for example if you are sitting and your posture is not correct or if you are made to sit on a seat of say 4 to 5 you are there are 10 persons sitting on that same seat so you will feel that how congested it must be and how much it adds the physical discomfort of that person now he or she will only be bothered at that time about his or her own comfort rather than focusing on what the other person is trying to say or communicate so you need to take care of these things before you proceed for the to the process of communication you may also have a physical discomfort if you were not able to sleep properly if there is something serious that is happening in that the back of your mind that is bothering you and for that you are not able to sleep so when you are physically not fit you will certainly not be fit mentally so you need to take care of your physical health as well when you take care of your physical health your mental health is also taken care of so take care that you are physically fit as well as mentally alert let us not talk about the another barrier that comes under the physical barriers category and that is ignorance of media media sometimes acts as a barrier to the process of communication so whatever medium of communication that you are choosing you should take care that the people know about that media they should be aware of that medium of communication if you are choosing a medium take care that the other person who is there you can say for example if you are talking if you are delivering a lecture in the village and you take up you prepare yourself only on the ppt slides and when you go there you find that there is no there is there is a parker there is no projector there is nothing so you have not thought about the media of communication so when you are thinking you are going to a remote area be prepared that you should carry your laptop as well your ppts as well but at the same time you should prepare if there is a parker you should be able to teach on the board you should be able to communicate your lecture to those people without using any presentation aids like the pdi the ppts or without using the projectors as well so take care of the media that you have chosen let us now quickly talk about the linguistic and cultural barriers as i said earlier also children our language and culture it varies from place to place from nation to nation it is different so that is why we say that english is a global language it is an international language a language that is known across the world and it is a common language across the world that is why english is given so much of importance these days because it is the only language that has taken the international standard if you are well versed with english you will not find difficulties in at other places as well but at times language occurs our language persists as a barrier to the process of communication for example person coming from south if he is traveling to north and he doesn't know the language over here that is hindi it will be difficult for that person to communicate because and in that case language acts as a barrier to the process of communication there in the culture also acts as a barrier we have different cultures and the culture varies from place to place from person to person from country to country 
so it also acts as a barrier if there is something good in other culture and that you do not know the people may take it as an offense and they will not respect you in that sense so take care that when you are moving to the to uh, some different country you take a note of their language and their culture prominent culture that is there is the handshake how to make a handshake how to make how should you should you keep your because when we were talking about body language i told you that in certain countries uh, looking into the eyes is not considered to be good it is not a good gesture when you are looking straight into the eyes of a person and speaking some countries accept it but some countries do not accept it so when you are traveling across you should take a note of these small small things that play a vital role because in that your communication process would play a major major role and you need to take a note of these things before going to that country or before going to that place mechanical barriers the barriers that happen when you are speaking supposedly you are communicating to some person or you are speaking on a mic and there is on a microphone and there is a loud noise of that microphone that microphone is not working properly so it acts as a barrier to the process of communication because in that case you will not be able to send your message to the other person clearly so before you go for a lecture or before you go for a talk or before you go to give a presentation take care that go there some time before like half an hour before the presentation starts see that your microphone phone is working properly the projector is there the projector is working fine your uh, if you are using the powerpoint slides you must have a good backup the laptop should have a good battery backup so that if even if there is a power cut you can continue your lecture without any interruptions i hope children i am clear with the barriers to the process of communication and uh, all of you have understood what are the barriers and how these barriers could be dealt with nothing is impossible if you really have a will to do something you will certainly be able to do it so go ahead and try and emerge as good communicators a communicator who is ready to fight the inhibitions and come up across with the barriers fight the barriers and emerge as a very good communicator a very effective communicator thank you very much if there is anything that you need to know or if there is anything that you have not understood over here please let me know i will be very happy to answer that thank you very much